This last weekend, a brand new TV network launched in the UK by the name of GB News. GB stands for Great Britain, of course. And I can tell you from my time covering the trials of Tommy Robinson that the UK media is even worse than Canada's. I tell you, it's true. I know you don't believe me. I think I might have told you once the story of how a BBC journalist literally contacted the police about my journalism, asking for me to be arrested. He demanded that they investigate me. Don't let me go on a tangent here, but I I was also in court, live tweeting a trial. That's what I do. And a rival journalist literally passed a note to one of the judges in the middle of the trial, asking the judges to kick me out for what I was live tweeting. They they actually stopped the trial. The judges stepped out. They read the note. Then they came back in and told the little snitch that tweeting is permitted. And they got back to the trial. It's insane over there. That's how bad the media party is in the UK. They literally wanted to have me arrested and thrown in jail. They actually called the police. They actually interrupted a trial. This wasn't during a lockdown or anything. It's not that I wasn't wearing a mask. This was pre-pandemic. I was literally just in the court typing. And the BBC, absolutely atrocious. The worst of the worst. You think the CBC is bad? That's $1.5 billion a year of left-wing extremism. Well, the BBC is 5 billion pounds a year. That's 8.5 billion Canadian dollars. Imagine that. If the CBC had six times as much funding as they do, imagine how they'd smother and destroy everything else. And they're just so awful. Now, the BBC is so vast, there are a few journalists within it, you can count them on one hand, who accidentally might be called conservative. Andrew Neil was one of them. He's had a lot of different media jobs in the UK, editing several newspapers, very senior guy, started another TV station for Rupert Murdoch, so he's a senior guy. I first came upon him after the terrorist attack on the Bataclan nightclub in Paris. I just saw this guy on TV with a rant. Here's a short clip of that. I'd never seen him before, but he was a pretty senior guy uh, even then. Take a look. Evening all, welcome to this week. A week in which a bunch of loser jihadists slaughtered 132 innocents in Paris to prove the future belongs to them, rather than a civilization like France. Well, I can't say I fancy their chances. France, the country of Descartes, Boulet, Monet, Sartre, Rousseau, Camus, Renoir, Berlioz, Cézanne, Gauguin, Hugo, Voltaire, Matisse, Debussy, Ravel, Sanson, Bizet, Satie, Pasteur, Molière, Frank, Zola, Balzac, Poulenc, cutting-edge science, world-class medicine, fearsome security forces, nuclear power, Coco Chanel, Chateau Lafitte, Coco Van, Daft Punk, Zizou Zidane, Juliette Binoche, Liberty, Egality, Fraternity, and Creme Brulee. Versus what? Beheadings, crucifixions, amputations, slavery, mass murder, medieval squalor, a death cult barbarity that would shame the Middle Ages. Well, IS or Dash or ISIS or ISIL or whatever name you're going by, I'm sticking with IS, as in Islamist scumbags. I think the outcome is pretty clear to everybody but you. I love that. And I said, who is this fellow, Andrew Neil? Anyways, he's, he's always been an outstanding journalist, very rigorous, very fair. Conservative, sure, but I've never seen anyone, uh, I've never seen him give anyone a gentle interview, especially conservatives. I think he's sensitive to that. So he almost goes extra hard on them. Here's just an example. This is him, I think, devastating Boris Johnson the British Prime Minister who calls himself a conservative. Now, in this case, they're talking about a free trade deal and Brexit, but it really doesn't matter. Look at this guy. I'm going to play a minute of this. Uh, As we come out to agree under GATT 24, paragraph 5b, that both sides agree to a standstill, a protraction of their existing uh, zero tariff, zero quota arrangements until such time as uh, we do a free trade but deal. What? And that would be one way forward. And, but, and but I think about, that would be very attractive. What about, and of, uh, course it, of course, it would be up to our friends and partners yes. to decide so whether they want to go along with that. So how would you handle, you talk that. about Article 5B, 
in paragraph uh, five. 24. Article 24. Get the it's detail right. Five. Get the yeah. detail right, Andrew. It's how, Article 24, paragraph 5. And B. how would you handle uh, paragraph 5C? I would, res I would confide entirely in paragraph 5B, because that is... But how would you get around what's in 5C? I would confide entirely in paragraph 5B, which is you know enough for our purposes. No. I thought you were a man of detail. Well, you, you, you didn't know whether it was an arrow article or a paragraph. But well, there's that's enough, enough detail there's you enough, told there's that enough, has there's enough in paragraph 5B to get us no, an agreement that we want. No, 5C says... You yeah, Andrew Neal is a conservative, but he is a journalist first. And don't try to pull a fast one on him, eh? Well, the great news is that when the BBC was done with Andrew Neal, when they were tired of him, when they were tired of an old white male, they threw him on the trash heap. He didn't stay there. He, you know, started a rival TV network called GB News. And my God, is it good. It's obviously focused on the UK. And so I'd say half of what they talk about is probably not going to interest people outside the UK. But the other half... I think they're universal issues, cancel culture, censorship, I don't know, transgender extremism, taking a knee in sports, which is ripping up their soccer league right now. Joe Biden, the pandemic, lockdowns, Iran, taxes, spending, boring. All of those things are of great interest to us, too, to anyone in the free West. You can download the GB News app on your phone for free. I did. And I have to say, I'm sort of hooked. I... I um, showed uh, this clip on my live stream on Monday at noon, but in case you don't watch that, if you missed it, check out this opening declaration by Andrew Neal. Does this not get you excited? Good evening. I'm Andrew Neal, and this is GB News. It's 8 p.m. on Sunday, June the 13th, 2021. Welcome to the launch of GB News, Britain's news channel dedicated to covering the news that matters to you and to giving a voice to those who felt sidelined or even silenced in our great national debates. Because if it matters to you, it matters to us. GB News will not slavishly follow the existing news agenda. We're not a rolling news channel, nor will we be providing conventional news bulletins. But on all of our programs and platforms, you'll always know what's going on and what the country is talking about. We will broadcast news programs throughout the day that are appointments to view, built around passionate presenters with character, flair, attitude, opinion, and yes, a sense of humor. They will concentrate on the stories that matter to you and that others are neglecting. And even when we're covering the same stories as others, we'll come at them in a very different way. We put together a lineup of youth and experience, of familiar faces and fresh ones. They come from all backgrounds and all parts of our country too. Our team of national and regional reporters covering the whole of the UK is the backbone of GB News, embedded in communities they know because that's where they hail from delivering the huge range of stories and voices that reflect the views and values of our United Kingdom. What unites us is the firm belief that now is the time to do news differently. We are committed to covering the people's agenda, not the media's agenda. We will not lecture you or talk down, and nobody will be allowed to Hector. Indeed, Hector has been banished from the studio. GB News will not be yet another echo chamber for the metropolitan mindset that already dominates so much of our media. It is our explicit aim to empower those who feel their stories, their opinions, their concerns have been ignored or diminished. We are proud to be British. The clue is in the name. And while we will never hold back from covering our country's many flaws and problems, we will not come at every story with the conviction that Britain is always at fault, usually to blame when things go wrong, generally useless. We won't forget what the B stands for in our title. We will cover the good news as well as the bad, because even in grim times there is much that is great and uplifting to report and celebrate about our country. We will encourage debate and conversation to include voices you don't often hear on other news broadcasts. We'll sometimes quote controversy, but we want civilized discourse, not shouting matches, no matter how heated our discussions become. And we like heated discussions, but we will always demand respect for opposing points of view. We won't dwell much on the latest gossip of the Westminster bubble. 
which is too often obsessed about matters of no importance to anybody else. We will puncture the pomposity of our elites in politics, business, media and academia and expose their growing promotion of cancel culture for the threat to free speech and democracy that it is. We'll be more concerned with what will raise prosperity and create jobs in our left behind towns than what some overprivileged and ahistoric students decide to hang on their walls in Oxford. Social mobility and a fair chance in life for all will matter more to us than the wasteland to nowhere that is identity politics. And if you want fake news, lies, disinformation, distortion of the facts, conspiracy theories, then GB News is not for you. Because in everything we do, we will be guided by the highest journalistic standards written into the contracts of everybody who works here at GB News. Robust, even disputatious debate, of course. A much wider variety of voices than you currently hear in broadcasting, certainly. But never the promotion of matters we know to be untrue or the pushing of facts that are convenient to a viewpoint that may be convenient, but not properly checked. And when we do make mistakes, as we will, we will correct them quickly and without quibble. Along the way, we hope to have fun. We hope you will too. GB News will aim to inform, inspire and entertain. We start the journey tonight. We hope you'll join us because if it matters to you, it matters to us. I'm Andrew Neil, and this is GB News. Isn't that great? Well, I have enjoyed it. It's only been a couple of days. I'd watch it just for Andrew Neal. He's on every night. Um, here he is grilling the Tory finance minister. They call him the Chancellor of the Exchequer. Take a look. The manifesto contained a promise of the triple lock on pensions. Does that promise maintain? Yeah, that, that, that's very much our policy. I mean, yeah, formally, but are you going to maintain well, it? I mean, the, the triple lock, just for our viewers, is there. Pensions should be increased either by inflation or the increase in average wages or by 2.5%, whatever is the higher. Uh, is that still government policy? Of course that's still government policy. And, and actually, if we look at what has that policy achieved, it has ensured that pensioner poverty is now right. far lower than it was when that policy was implemented. That's why that policy was introduced. So it's something okay. that has actually delivered so for pension. Average wages are now rising by almost 6%. It could be 8% by July. So you're telling the people tonight that pensions will rise by 8%. Well, I, I think formally, Andrew, and I have to be careful because I, I can't comment about fiscal policy outside of events, which you'll appreciate. With regard to pensions uprating, there's actually a statutory review that's carried out later in the year that sets the uprating, which is then brought to but Parliament. But you promised, so I, you yeah, promised but I, the triple lock, yeah, and the I, triple I, lock, I earnings are the highest of the three metrics in, in, in your manifesto. So... You're saying tonight that pensions will rise by about 8% if that's what average earnings are. He's good. He also grilled on how he's going to pay for Boris Johnson's net zero climate BS. That was a hoot, and it was painfully clear that this Chancellor of the Exchequer doesn't want to go down that green insanity. Um, GB News is a very diverse outlet, by the way. I'm not talking about race, in case you thought I was, although it is diverse that way also. I'm talking about opinions. Mercy Maroki and Inaya Fuller and Aman are warriors in the battle against cancel culture and against critical race theory. They are so good. Oh, I followed them even before GB News snapped them up. I wish we had a critical mass of pro-individualist thinkers like them in Canada. They're, they're the best. Anyways, great start, great channel. I have to make sure I don't spend too much time watching it because I, I live here in Canada. Canada has to be my number one concern. I should say one more thing, though, just before I go on it. Their opening night, which I watched on the app, I was blown away by how many ads they had on. Almost too many. Like, I almost had enough of the ads, but it's amazing. And they were from all the big brands. Now, some brands I don't really know about because they're UK-oriented, but you could tell they were very blue-chip, very professional ad campaigns. For example, Amazon, obviously, just doesn't get any bigger than that. Even green energy companies, beer companies, like very hip. I, I don't know how it happened that they got so many great ads. Sun News in Canada never got ads like that. 
Fox News in America gets ads, but they're often from ideological supporters like the My Pillow guy. How did that happen? Well, that's the thing. I noticed one thing about GB News even before they were launched. Um, and this is part of a universal theme too, something that applies to us here too. Even before they launched their first minute on TV, they hadn't said anything yet. They were being denounced as racist and white supremacist and far right. That's what they call the alt right over there in the UK. There were boycotts even before they said a word. How does that even work? Well, it works just fine. If you're a fascist and uh, censorship is the whole point of shutting someone up, um, it's not a debate that we want them to shut up. So the best way to shut someone up is before they even get started. Censorship isn't about what they said. It's about who they are and who they aren't. Well, the debut of the channel was a smash hit in the ratings. GB News, literally on its first night, was the top viewed news channel in the UK, even beating the BBC's all news channel. How did that happen? Unless you think that was just some opening night curiosity. They did it again and they did it again. Uh, it helps that they're getting huge and prominent guests like the finance minister I mentioned and uh, they're very important people in the UK and, and people with an international profile too. But again, that's to their credit, they're, they're just good journalists, they command that respect. But the mob, the censorship mob works in funny ways. I've seen it many times around the world in the US and Canada, in Australia too even. You may think you're brave, and maybe you are. But until you go through a mob, a Twitter mob, a cancel culture mob, you just don't know what it's like and maybe you're not up to it. I, I don't know. You have to go through it on Twitter. A zillion accounts, many of them anonymous, most of them just the equivalent of photocopies of a master account, start hounding you, surrounding you, chattering at you, claiming to be a customer of yours, claiming that they're going to stop being a customer unless you stop advertising with someone or stop supporting someone or, or fire someone or stop being friends with someone. And they basically say either you join with our pitchforks and torches mob and we're gonna kill our target, and you join us, or you're the target. Decide quickly, because we got a burning torch here and you got a grass hut. It's a kind of blackmail, a kind of shakedown. Join us in the mob, or the mob's gonna get you. And most woke corporations just capitulate. And it's not even always a decision made by a real decider, like the company president, but rather it's usually some hard left wing millennial social media intern or whatever, or just someone who panics. Look at this, a company called Money Supermarket got some anonymous Twitter tweet by Shazza G8. Who is Shazza G8? Nobody. They just literally set that Twitter account up this month. They, they, they have less than 10 followers. It's just a fake account to pester GB News advertisers like this. How long do you plan to advertise on the awful GB News channel? I'm really surprised a company like yours would want to be associated with them in any way. I will be moving my business to another comparison site that isn't happy to fund GB News. Boycott. A comparison site. You don't even know what you're saying, do you? Yeah, you liar. You don't have an account with Money Supermarket. You don't know what Money Supermarket is. You're just a fake robot. You're a troll. But look at this. Thanks for getting in touch. We understand there are strongly held views on both sides when it comes to this topic. Because GB News is such a new channel, we need time to fully understand it. With that in mind, we've decided to pause our ad slots pending a review. That's all it took. That's all it took. So it worked. The boycott worked. Some fake account with less than 10 followers just set up anonymous telling lies. I will go to a different category company. Well, you don't even know what Money Supermarket is. And now you have Money Supermarket, whatever it is, thinking it gets to decide the political commentary on news channels? How about stick to your money supermarketing? <laughs> Whatever that is. Ikea was the worst, by the way. Here's a Twitter account with 19 followers. Hey, Ikea UK, as you're advertising on a right-wing news channel, we will not be buying from your website or stores in the near future. Boycott GB News. And Ikea, that Swedish furniture company, they jumped. We are in the process of investigating how this may have occurred to ensure it won't happen again in future and have suspended paid display advertisement in the meantime. Dennis. Hey, thanks, Dennis. And they said uh, this to another person on Twitter. IKEA has not knowingly advertised on GB News. We have safeguards in place to prevent our advertising from appearing on platforms that are not in line with our humanistic values and vision to side with the many people. Dennis, what, what language is that? Um, you know Ikea's humanistic values, right? You, you know that Ikea was 
you know, they were started by a Nazi, right? Like an actual Nazi. You could probably tell that, guess that by how hard it is to assemble the bloody things. Uh, I mean, I'm not holding that against the company in 2021. I, I have some IKEA stuff, but don't tell me about your humanistic values, you Nazis. Even today, literally this week, just this week, they were fined a million euros for spying on their own staff. Super gross. I wonder if they called it the Gestapo system in Ikea. So gross. But guys, they're humanists. And you can tell they're humanists uh, because they've set up stores all across Saudi Arabia where they stone gays to death and they don't let women drive or even go out in public without their man owner. Uh, but uh, they have humanistic values and they would never advertise with GB News. Yeah, humanistic values. But here's what's new. And here's what I'm excited about. And I know that Andrew Neil himself is planning to do a rant on this subject tonight. Maybe I'll show you a clip about it tomorrow. He's fighting back. Look at this exchange with some green energy tycoon that got messed up in this. So uh, in a BBC story, this green energy guy made a bit of a smear. Octopus is the company. Octopus said it would only run ads in the future if the news channel proved, quote, genuinely balanced. Greg Jackson, the company's founder, said it did not advertise on platforms whose primary purpose is the distribution of hate. Well, and this is interesting, there's a little bit of a backlash to that backlash. I hope GB News and Andrew Neil sue people like this guy for slander Platforms whose primary purpose is the distribution of hate is an outrageously dishonest slur, even if you don't share the political slant of GB News. And he's right, isn't he? I mean, seriously, saying that the primary purpose of this platform, you got 150 people, um, a huge opera, your primary platform is not to tell the news, it's not to make money, it's to distribute hate. That's your purpose. Who says something so insane? That actually is legally defamatory, isn't it? Well, that woke CEO read that tweet from a critic, and um, I don't know, maybe he was spooked by how crazy he looked to the world now that he read his own words, because he seemed to climb down a bit right away on Twitter. He said, some people were saying we shouldn't advertise on platforms which spread hate. We confirmed that we don't. We separately said we want to see GBN output before deciding whether to advertise. Some media reported out of context, and I think that's led to misinterpretation. Yeah, I don't think it was out of context. I think you know exactly what the story was about, and you said what you said. I think you were taking liberties, and you realized how insane you sounded. Well, Andrew Neal needs no defending, as you saw with Boris Johnson. He can take on pretty much anyone he likes and come out on top. So this is what he said. He said, maybe you should boycott the media that's reporting you out of context. Instead of GB News, have a look at our content. You'll find no hate. Let me know if you want to advertise, and I'll let you know if we want your ads or whether we organize a boycott of you. Isn't that amazing? And that's the thing. Why only play defense? And seriously, you're going you're gonna to accuse Andrew Neal and his diverse team of being hate mongers? And by the way, who the hell are you? Some green lobbyist? So that green energy guy, I think he's chastened a bit. He wrote back. He said, actually, Andrew, I'm watching your interview with Rishi right now. Currently, the bit about gas boilers. As per my message, we didn't boycott. I wanted to see the channel and am true to my word. <laughs> Sounds uh, more reasonable. Sounds like a bit of damage control. Here's Andrew Neal. How many other channels have you watched before deciding to advertise? I will be looking at brands to decide if they are fit to advertise with us. I will have something to say about that and more on a special media watch tonight on GB News, 8 p.m. Oh, seriously, do these brands, does IKEA, for example, examine the editorial policy of every news media it advertises in? Of course not. But maybe Andrew Neal has something to say about their Nazi past. And his last word on Twitter, here's Andrew Neal. He says, I resent even the thought that a channel of which I was chairman would peddle hate. You should know better. I'll let you know what Andrew Neal says on his show tonight. I'll play a clip of you for tomorrow. By the way, I think the money supermarket guys got scared. Uh, here's what they wrote later. Uh, just to confirm, guys, uh, Money Supermarket is not boycotting its advertising on GB News. Sorry for any confusion caused. <laughs> Sorry, guys. And here's what actually a, a really socially conscious chain uh, called Co-op UK wrote, 
And I think they do the smartest job of all. Uh, you, you tell me. They said, in, in, in response to these hecklers, they said, we have developed a detailed and thoughtful advertising approach, which is driven by three principles. One, we will not seek to affect the editorial independence of publications or channels. That's a great way of putting it. Two, we will not undermine the commercial value of our society for our members. Society, I think that they're talking about the co-op, so they have sort of members. That, that's their way of saying shareholder value. Three, we will ensure our values and principles are clear and undiminished, undiminished regardless of surrounding content. So what, what does that mean? Well, it means they're not, they're not going to try and muscle TV or radio or newspaper changes and stations to change who they are. Good for them. Good for them. They're not censors. Number two, they're not going to make dumb business decisions in the name of being woke. They're not going to stop advertising somewhere because someone heckles them. And finally, they know who they are and they want their members to know who they are. I thought that was refreshing and surprising. I want to watch Andrew Neal's counterattack tonight. He's strong because of a lifetime of credibility and judgment and senior posts in many other media outlets as a publisher, editor, presenter. He has high society friends too, rich and powerful friends too. He's not marginalized. And he's smart, and he's not going to let his new project be killed by some cancel culture mob losers. Let's watch what he does. And maybe, like so many things on GB News, hmm, maybe it could be a bit of a role model for us over here, too. That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. You gotta subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.